All right, now in this problem, we're given what's called a half Atwood's machine. In other words, half of the system, the block M2, is hanging off the end of a table, and block M1 is resting on a table. Let's derive an equation for the acceleration of the system in terms of G, M1, and M2, assuming that mass 2 is greater than mass 1, and that this, the mass 2 is falling or accelerating down towards the ground. I'm going to be using the system analysis approach to solve this problem. I'll begin by drawing my system boundary on my sketch. All right, so I've gone ahead and drawn my system boundary. Uh, this time our system is the same as last time. It's uh, M1, M2, and the rope that attaches them. I'll redraw my system in a shape that's a little bit more uh, friendly to work with, and then I will analyze the external forces acting on my system. All right. If we're told that the table that block one is resting on is frictionless, then I don't need to worry about any forces on block one resisting the acceleration of the system. Yes, the table does provide a normal force on block one, and yes, the earth does pull on block one with the gravitational force. However, these forces are equal and balanced in this case because the block M1 is not accelerating vertically um, in the direction up and down on the table. And so I know that these are going to be balanced and will not contribute to the net force. Therefore, the only external force in this scenario I need to consider is the force that the Earth exerts on the mass M2. This is the force that will cause the system to accelerate. That would be equal to M2 times G. So on my force diagram, I'll, again, define my direction for positive acceleration like so. I will show it like to the right and down is positive. So here, uh, to the right is positive, and then uh, in the y direction for m2, uh, down will be positive, because that's the direction of acceleration. So I know then that if on my force diagram I show this force of gravity, that will be a positive force that will cause the system to accelerate, and I don't have any forces resisting acceleration because there's no friction on block m1. But I would include that if I did, as that would be an external force. So in this case, the Newton's second law application becomes quite straightforward. The net force on the system is just equal to the weight force of block two. And that will be equal to the mass total times the acceleration of the system. And so if I were to uh, go ahead and expand this, I would say that the mass two times G would be equal to mass total in this case will just be M1 plus M2 because the rope has no mass we're assuming and that'll be multiplied by the accelerations of the system. Uh, I will go ahead and divide by m1 plus m2 on both sides to get a by itself. And then I will have the expression that the acceleration is equal to m2g over m1 plus m2. And for part b, if we're asked to solve for the tension in the rope, given the mass of m1 is 4 kilograms and the mass of m2 is 8 kilograms, I'll go ahead and plug these in to solve for my acceleration. That would be 8 times 9.8 divided by 4 plus 8, which would give me an acceleration of 6.5 meters per second squared, uh, which I would then use now to solve for the tensional force. Uh, I can look at either object or either block to find the tensional force because they both have the same uh, tensional force acting on them. I'm going to go ahead and choose block M1, because I know that the only force acting in the x-direction on block M1 is that tensional force. So if I were to show that, I'll go ahead and show that on the left here. The force diagram for block M1 looks like this, right? This is T, the tensional force. The normal force points up, and the gravitational force points down, but they're equal, so I won't worry about those. Uh, then that means then that the sum of the forces on block M1 will be just the tensional force, and that will be equal to M1 times a, and that's that same acceleration we saw before, right? The acceleration of the system is the same as the acceleration of each object inside the system. So I know then that tension will be equal to M1 was 4 kilograms, and the acceleration was 6.5. Uh, and I'll actually use the full value here, which was 6.533, just to make sure I don't get any rounding error. That means my tension is equal to uh, just about 26 newtons in that rope. And again, uh, you can prove this as well with uh, M2. If you were to use M2 instead, you would see you would get the same tension value. As an exercise, I would like you to pause the video, take a moment, and see if you can solve for the tensional force using the force diagram for block 2 instead, and you should get the same result.